I'll tell you, this Mini Coupe S is by far the most fun car I've driven the entire year. So I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I'm going to give this car on the TFL scale of buy at least it, rent it, or forget it, a forget it. Find out why coming up on the Fast Lane Car right now. So here's a question for you. What do you get when you take a Mini Cooper S and you stretch it a little bit, turn it into a hatchback, yank out the two back seats, put on the roof a baseball cap, not my words, but Mini's words, and best of all, under the hood, stuff in 181 horsepower, inline four turbocharged engine. You get, my friends, by far, the most fun car I've driven all year, and that includes the Fiat Abarth. Mini calls it the coupe, or coupe, I suppose, if you're British, and I call it frustrating because I've never driven a car that I love and hate so much at the same time. Let me show you why with the zero to 60 mile per hour test. All right, zero to 60. I'm gonna turn the air off. I'm gonna hit the sport button. I've got the Solo DL. Real world conditions, here we go. Zero to 60, I'm gonna try not to bog it. Oh, wheel spin. There's the power. Oh, hit the red limiter. And there's 60. All right, what do you guys think? It's supposed to be 6.4 at sea level with a thin guy and about a gallon of gas. I got 8.27. Not bad, not bad with two people at a mile above sea level. Perhaps the most interesting, obvious, and unique design aspect of the Mini is the roof. Think of it as a backwards baseball cap with the spoiler being the shield. That's according to Mini. You know what? In pictures, it doesn't look so good. Up close and in real life, it's actually very attractive, unique, and quirky in a good way. The heart of this coupe is this inline 181 horsepower engine that puts out 192 pound-feet of torque, which is tremendous. Best of all, it's a turbocharged engine for up here at altitude, and it has virtually zero turbo lag and virtually zero torque steer. It's a hoot to drive, and it gets good gas mileage in the process. Not bad, not bad at all. So you wouldn't think a teeny tiny car like this Mini has a lot of utility. I mean, you're not going to remodel your house with this thing, right? But this hatchback is surprisingly useful. It fits reasonable size suitcase, and best of all, they've even added pass-through for things like, well, skis or a tripod. Potentially, the coupe competes with cars like the Subaru BRZ, the Scion FRS, and of course, even the Golf GTI. All those cars can be had for a base of around 25000 Of course, good luck finding this coupe for 25000 base, because more likely you'll be into the 30s quickly, at which point it competes with cars like the Golf R, which is more powerful, faster, and comes with all-wheel drive. What makes this car so much fun is its handling dynamics. It is a go-kart in the best sense of the word. I can tell exactly what the front wheels are doing. I can put this car within a millimeter of the apex around this turn, and it just puts a huge smile on my face going around these corners because everything is an extension of my brain. The wheel, the brakes, the six-speed manual. This is the way God would design a sporty car. There is unfortunately a huge downside to this car. What makes it so much fun to drive also makes it almost impossible to live with. When you're on a beautifully newly paved road like this, it's a dream to drive. But any road imperfections, any expansion joints, any potholes will send a jaw-breaking jitter up your spine. This car's ride is so harsh that after a half hour, I'm longing for the old man Lexus just to get my brain back into my head.
whatever diabolical fiend and mini designed this seatbelt, they should be lined up and shot. It's like a ball constrictor. It literally chokes the life out of my shoulder. I have never sat in a car before where at the end of a half hour, my shoulder is crying out for mercy because this thing hurts so much. Am I whining? You bet. Don't even get me started on the BMW iDrive clone with this little phallic doodad controller. Oh my gosh. But this car is ultimately a hoot to drive and at the same time crazy frustrating. So I'm going to whist out a little bit. On the TFL scale of buy it, rent it, lease it, or forget it, I'm going to say if you want a car for around the city for the weekend in the mountains, then definitely buy it. But if you're thinking this is a cute little car that you're gonna live with and use on an everyday basis, forget it. As always, this is Roman, reporting for the Fast Lane Car. See you next time. Recording. You wanna say hi to the camera? Hi camera, rock and roll. Winnie calls it the coupe, or if you're British, I suppose coupe. <laughs> Minnie calls it the coupe, or I suppose if you're British, the coupe. I call it. <laughs> perhaps the most interesting and obvious, perhaps the most interesting, obvious, and unique design aspect of this Mini is the roof. Think of it, at least according to Minnie. God damn it!